Ahmed from Ahmed Ra and you're watching Talking Records. First of all, uh, congratulations on 20 years of Ahmed Ra. Yeah. I wanted to ask, um, what is your approach when it comes to reinventing yourself with each album? Does it get harder with each record or quite the opposite because of all the experience that you already gained with the previous records? It's double. Some things are harder, some things are easier. But all in all, I would say it becomes harder and harder to uh, not uh, go away of your own self too much. Uh, of what the band was intended to be but then again you're afraid that you might repeat yourself too much you know but we're the kind of band that don't doesn't want to do like a style switch or doesn't want to like try hard to 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 make it interesting for the people in our case the most important thing is the the core emotion that is transponded through the music and the the, the essence of the story you know the 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 core story of our, uh, our creation, yeah. When do you know internally that, okay, now this is the time <coughs> when I will create a new Amman Ra album? I know when we have a, a new, a new, a new uh, chapter of the story to tell, you know. We have, we have, in essence, we write about the same things over and over again. It's about loss, it's about being hurt, it's about being lost in life and finding your ways around it trying to cope with adversity and and, uh, and dark times in the lifetime. And I think uh, if, if some of us, if, if, if most of us have uh, the right reasons to, then the rest follows and, you know, addresses the, 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 the story to be told. And that's how we, that's how the riffs and the melodies become most powerful, I think, when someone is really frustrated and uh, has a, a, an aggressive need to out himself, the riff that comes out of that person is going to be ferocious, more ferocious than a, uh, an average riff written just for the sake of writing some music. Okay, it comes from within. Yeah, it, it translates way more intense if you wait for the right timing. I believe, that's what we believe, I mean. I admire the world of contrast that Amen Ra is, like for example, in A Solitary Rain, which is both beautiful and sad. How does ideas seemingly so opposite coexist together? There is, sad, there is beauty and sadness, there is beauty and adversity, you know. In all darkness, you have to find your way to, um, to see the light, you know, like to, 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 to find an end point, you know, or uh, or the beginnings of a new chapter or something. So, so there is, it's it's a feeling uh, most of us have inside of us, you know, uh, a certain sadness that is unexplainable, or um, the most beautiful moments are equally as sad uh, in that particular moment because you know what could happen or what is going to happen at some point or, you know. You have to, you have to go to the darkness to find the light. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, that's what we do, you know. We use that, we use that darkness. We really have grown accustomed to using it as our play. It's our starting point in storytelling. And it's, uh, it's our uh, trajectory from that um, very um, vulnerable state into a very, um, hopeful, more uh, powerful state where you overcome that certain uh, adversity. You said a very powerful thing once. Um, the more I draw pain towards me, the more I can save those I love from yeah. pain. So do you feel like um, you have some kind of a mission with what you do, some kind of purpose? I'd like to think so, you know, to make my life uh, here uh, meaningful and to make it all make sense. Um, but it's that 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 uh, it's a, it's something I created for myself, like a coping mechanism, like uh, because so many people were dying around me, that I feared that I was going to lose everybody, and I really um, made a construction in my head that I could believe in and draw 
strength from when I believe like okay if I hurt myself or if, if, if I inflict physical pain upon myself that's how I'm able to, 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 to save those people I love from harm. It was just something apparently that I needed for myself to be able to give all of those um, those uh, things that were happening in my life a place and, 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 and structure it in my own self. I needed that to hold on to, you know. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what we do, I think, in the band. Yeah. I like the metaphor of, of, uh, of physical pain um, to, uh, to visualize or materialize uh, uh, psychological pain, you know. Because you see that wound and you see it closing up and you see it becoming a scar. All that happens in your mind too with stuff that happens with you throughout your life, but you don't see it as, it's not as easy yet to read as a scar or as a physical wound. So I really love, I really love to play with that, you know. I, uh, you, you use your body as a tool of, of, of sacrifice almost to the moment. Yeah. And apparently a lot of people are drawn to that and, and they can see you overcome a certain type of physical pain and... Can identify with it. And identify with it because they have a similar feeling inside or something, you know. And that is, a, in my opinion, has been a special moment in some of our, you know, special shows that we did throughout our uh, 20 years. It must be that also unbelievable feeling when people come to you and say that this lyric or this part of uh, this thing what you said uh, touched them personally. Yeah, I think it's the most beautiful comment you can get as a, as a musician or as an artist in, in, in general, I think. It has no, I never, ha I never feel like it has a decent reply. You can thank people, but you're always kind of standing there without knowing what to say. While it is one of the most beautiful compliments there is, there are. I mean, it's not something that we chose to do, to be able to touch someone else with our music or to mean something to someone else. Uh, but it just happened to us and we, we consider ourselves incredibly uh, lucky to have, uh, to have met that uh, expectation of some people, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. We can't explain it either, you know. What we make, we, we solely make for ourselves. And we can only hope that someone else can draw some strength or energy from it, you know. It warms my heart to know that, you know, when, when people come to visit or to uh, experience an Amman Rasho, the first rows in, people are connected to each other. If you understand what we're doing on stage, it means that you have felt true hurt at some point. You know, or, or loss, or, or have uh, felt a genuine pain at some point in your life, and in the feeling of not being alone in that uh, and carrying that weight in your chest already gives you a certain strength to to uh, to overcome that. You, know. you are a pretty versatile artist. Besides the music, you also work with uh, visual artists like videos, photography are also important for you, sculptures also. Do you draw inspiration from a non-musical form of arts? I think we always knew when we started the band, we knew we wanted to be more than a, than a music band, you know, like uh, ent audio entertainment, you know. We, we knew we wanted it to be um, to have a, a really uh, artistic fundament and we wanted to create a world you know we wanted to be able to create something that people could step into and for to have that you also need um, an aesthetic fortress around your music that is that is invisible you know um, and that's how we teamed up with a lot of our uh, talented friends photographers in the beginning graphic designers painters dancers, um, illustrators, whatever you can think of. Because I realized that you had a lot of people working with different material, artistic, uh, an artistic medium, but are telling the same story. You know, they, they, it comes from the same place in their heart or it comes from the same experiences they have lived, but that's our, their way of, of telling that story. And then I, I realized that if we, if we are able to find all those different people 
and put it put us us all together and and try and try to tell that story in a in a communal way like everybody together it it, it reinforces everyone's story and that's when we realized that that it wasn't only the band anymore it wasn't only the five members of the band it was a, a collective of friends of, of kindred spirits uh, linked artists so uh, that's really important I and mean, it has been really important for us and, as, and, and every time we come across a certain uh, person or, or a certain artwork that speaks to us, you know, we're interested in that person and we mostly try to meet that person and see what kind of a person he is or, or she is. Find if there is this connection. Yeah, because it's not only about creating something beautiful or, or um, very explicitly narrative. Uh, it's also about who the person is behind that piece of work and what their angle is on creating, you know. And that's how, through the years, we were able to really um, gather uh, a group of really beautiful, in my opinion, people that really uh, are connected in a very uh, weird way, you know. In 2017, you toured USA with uh, Neurosis and Converge. Yeah. Right now, you are signed to Neurot Records, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, Neurosis is a very important band for you. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I wanted to ask what, what what it was like to to get in contact with them, to work with them, and what did you learn from being around them? <clears throat> I mean, they have been a huge influence in our in our in our uh, process of evolving as musicians. Uh, they are the band that definitely uh, determines our direction uh, above anyone else. Um, so at first, when we, you know, when we got closer to the to 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 the, to, to neurosis and neurot, um, we felt like little kids. You know, like we were honored just be, to be in their presence. You know, in their direct uh, surroundings. It's yeah, it's it's unexplainable, you know. And then um, getting to play a show with them, getting to have a decent conversationship with them uh, through the years, um, becoming friends and, and being able to be personal and, and, and normal about everything is such a such an honor and rewarding thing to, to, to be able to do that with with uh, artists and, and and people you admire and respect. So uh, from then on to touring together and, and spending time on the road and then being signed to Neurot, it, it, it became, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, uh, they, they really, I always consider them as, as like the, the, the older brothers that, that took, a, took us with them to, to, to discover the world, you know. They really put their, us under their wing and opened a hell of a lot of doors for us just because they said that you know we were a genuine credible they gave you the street cred they gave us the street cred definitely until then we were the band copying neurosis you know and they looked beyond that you know they could have just pushed us aside and were like yeah yeah you know another band that tries to be us or something but they really did the op the opposite of that and they really embraced us like nothing else and it's it's uh, it's amazing what they did for us, yeah. Hi everyone, this is Marek from Talking Records. Thank you for watching my interview with Colin from Amen Ra. Next to my head, you can find more interviews with musicians, concert photography, and album reviews. I will see you next time.